Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Update webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 19th of March 2018 and the time has just gone at 12.15 GMT, quarter past 12 p.m. UK time. Now what I'll be doing, uh, as always, with our with our webinar, I'll leave the risk warning slides up on the screen here in front of you for you guys to have a read through. Uh, it's very straightforward. It essentially states anything that I cover in the web in the, in the webinar today uh, is entirely my own thoughts, views, and opinions and comments, uh, and they should not be taken as explicit uh, tr trading or investment advice. Uh, this is something that is quite standard practice in our webinars uh, and, and also the videos that we, we, we produce. Uh, and also keep our compliance department very happy. Uh, while you're having a read of that, I'll, say, I'll talk about uh, what, what are the kind of main macroeconomic news stories of the um, of the past few days. Uh, one of the big ones is the is that was, it's, it's a pretty much a breaking story right now um, uh, in relation to Brexit. Uh, it, it would appear that a an agreement about the transition deal that the UK is going to have after it leaves the, leaves the, the European Union in 2019, a transition period will run until the end of 2020. Uh, so that will that will extend the, uh, the time period um, for the UK to potentially look to have, a, as the name says, a transition deal you can smooth over the process of leaving the European Union and any things that need to be negotiated and hammered out uh, will effectively be allowed uh, extra time to actually to work on. So we've seen a push higher in the, in the, in the pound on the back of that. Uh, cable has jumped uh, quite a bit, near, near, nearly up nine tenths of one percent today. Uh, on top of that, it's actually um, also we've seen a, quite a sizable sell-off in euro sterling. I will be covering those currency pairs in a bit. Uh, talk about what's going on in the equity markets. Uh, essentially, uncertainty surrounding uh, the potential trade war. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's no secret that Donald Trump isn't too happy with the trading relationship between the United States of America and China at the moment. He feels there's too much of an imbalance uh, which is favorable to the Chinese side. So Mr. Trump is potentially talking about uh, imposing uh, about, you know, between, say, 30 and 60 billion, uh, imposing tariffs on between, say, 30 and 60 billion dollars of, of, uh, of Chinese imports. Uh, and that is, what, that is what's weighing on the markets. Granted, nothing has really been further um, announced in relation to this, but nonetheless, equity markets are still nervous about it. Um, what we're now going to do, as always, with the with our webinar, I'll have a quick run through with the main topics of the week. If you go to our, to our website, uh, cmarkets.com uh, forward slash en hyphen gb news and analysis, you'll see that some of the updates that we, that we do throughout the day get up, updated. Uh, the update, I, the mid morning update I did shortly after 10 o'clock is listed here. And my colleague Michael's early morning update, which gets, which gets sent, which gets uploaded every every single uh, day, uh, I'd say around 5 a.m. or sorry, 6 6 a.m. is uploaded here. We'll have a quick look at the week ahead, and this gets posted to this po portion of the website every Friday afternoon. So we'll have a quick look at the major uh, economic and corporate events of the week. So on Tuesday tomorrow we have third quarter results from FedEx. Tomorrow uh, on Wednesday we have uh, UK inflation and wage data. Uh, on Wednesday, we also have full year figures from Kingfisher. Uh, on Thursday, we have the French and German uh, PMI, PMI reports coming out. On Thursday, we also have an update from Ted Baker, the clothing crowd. And on Thursday, we also have the IPO from Dropbox. And lastly but not least, the big one to watch out for on Friday will be next full year results. So with that in mind, uh, the major uh, corporate and economic events that we need to focus on, let's take a look now what's going on in the major markets. Just uh, one moment, please. Right, um, so go going through the, 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 uh, the process here, uh, what we're looking at is essentially, um, what we're looking at here is a, we go, we'll go through the major markets itself and take a look at what is going on on the, um, 
on the the major markets. I'll go through the indices, uh, the major indices, and go through a couple of commodities, and I'll go through the major currency pairs, and we'll go from there. So taking a look here at the, uh, the FTSE 100, and what we can see here is that the, the FTSE and the 30, it's, the, the, the correction is looking quite a bit shaky, and especially given the fact that the British pound is doing really well today. So what we're seeing is we're actually see, we're, we're, we are seeing a, quite a, 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 an increased sell-off because of the rally in the British pound. The inverse, inverse relationship between the strong pound and the, uh, the FTSE 100 is holding up. So what you can see here is that we had the major sell-off um, in late January, February. The market pushed higher here. It bounced, it, it kind of corrected itself here. But as you can see here, we pushed higher here, but we didn't take off the most recent high. We didn't take off the late, the late February high. So we, we've already created a l lower high, and we're, we're now pushing lower again. So if you take off this area here, which is in around the 7,060 region, if you take off this area here, that would be the creation of a lower low as well. And we could be looking heading back down towards 7,000 or perhaps even as low as 6,919, which would be this area here. And if you go through that area, we could be looking heading back down towards 6,800. So given the relatively weak um, bounce back that we've had here, it didn't, the, the push higher here failed to take off the late February high. I suspect we could be looking at a scenario where we take off this, the, the early March low, and we could be looking heading back down towards the February low. So keeping an eye on the German market now, what's going on over in Germany? It's a similar situ situ situation on the, on the DAX, but not, not, not as bad. As you can see here, after the major sell-off, the market pushed higher, uh, bound, rebounding. It managed to almost completely undo the correction that it had. It managed to push higher here, but yet again, we do appear to be in a bit of a limbo land. While we remain south of this area here, 12,600, it's likely that the outlook will remain negative. Uh, a break north of 12,600 could then potentially put, say, the 12,741 price on the card, which is in around the 200-day moving average. And if you go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards 12,911, which would be the 100-day moving average. But like I said, while we remain south of 12,600, this area here, it's, it, the outlook could remain negative, and we could be looking heading back down towards the uh, well, the recent lows of 11,692 11, in this area here. I'll turn our attention now to what's going on over in the US. The US markets have sort of, it's sort of, it would appear that the American markets have somewhat slightly stalled in their recovery. So we've had the major sell-off, we've had pull back most of the ground that we've lost, drifted lower again on the correction, and we, we are pushing higher here. So we do appear to be range-bound. Uh, for the time being, we do appear to be getting support from the 24,710 uh, level, which is the 100-day moving average here. Notice how on a couple of occasions recently, it did manage to act as support, so it's likely that level could act as support again. To the upside, um, we, are, we could be looking at getting some resistance from the 50-day moving average at 25,321. Notice how the 50-day moving average did manage, well, even though it traded north of it on a couple of occasions, it still didn't actually manage to hold above that level. So keep an eye on that area. Should we take off the recent high here, the, uh, the March high of, of 25,507, then we could be looking at heading back up towards the February high of 25,821. And then, of course, if you go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards uh, 26,000. If, if this uh, market does manage to drop back below the 100-day moving average, the area to keep an eye out for will be the March low of 24,213. And of course, if you go below that, we have created a uh, we've already created a lower high, so we could be looking at if you go below this, we will be creating a lower low. And if you go south of there, we could be looking heading back down towards the 23,800 and 38 area. This price is the, 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 the most recent, the most recent um, February low, which coincides with the 200 moving average at 23,363. So the US markets are in clearly a bit better shape than those of the uh, of in Europe. So 
So what we're looking at here on the on the S&P 500, as you can see, it's a similar situation, but the S&P is, is in a bit better shape than, than the Dow Jones. We have the major sell-off, the bounce back, the correct, the, 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 the bit, bit of a pullback. When the when, when the market pushed higher here in March, notice how the high of March managed to take off the high of February. High of February. So I would suggest that we're continued in the we're still in recovery mode. But that, so the areas to keep an eye out for to the upside will, of course, be the psychologically important 2,800. And if we go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards this price here, here uh, of 2,838. And of course, if we go north of that, we'll be looking to retest the all-time highs of 2,877. Move to the downside. We've already managed to kind of slip back below trade or trade below at least the 50 day moving average at 2,749. If we continue to drift lower from here, we may find some support in around the 2,700 area. But while we remain north of 2,700, the outlook is likely to remain positive as we created as the, because that the high here has, um, the high here to, to, to check out the, uh, the February high. But if you do manage to drop below the, uh, the March low of 2,647, that could be uh, a sign that we are heading back down towards the, the 2,600 area or perhaps even down as the low as the 200 day moving average at 2,585. And if you go south of there, we could be looking at testing the February low of 2,532. What I will say is this, the market does appear to be coming off here, it is drifting lower, and we're seeing a fairly steady decline in positive momentum. So we may see a bit of a retesting of 2,700. But even if you do uh, get, get down to 2,700, we've already had a higher high here. It could be a case of a higher low and then potentially looking to head back up towards 2,800 from there. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. Uh, as always, what I'll do is I'll, I'll cover some major indices, I'll go through some major commodities, I'll go through some major currency pairs. But if there are any markets you would like me to cover, feel free to type in the chat box and I'll happily take a look at them. So what you can see here, the price action of gold since uh, since late January has been broadly speaking to the downside. It hasn't been a perfect example of a downward trend, but broadly speaking, it is there. So after after hitting a multi a multi um, month high here in January, the market drifted lower, pushed higher here. The high of February failed to take off the high of uh, of January, and of course the low in well. What, End of February, March managed to take off the low of uh, just about managed to take off the low of March of, 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 um, of February. So we kind of we already have a, um, we have a lower low, lower high, another lower low, and potentially this is a lower high as well. So we could be looking heading back down towards the 1300 level, and if we go south south of 1300, we could be looking heading back down towards 1290, which would be the 200 day moving average. Bearing in mind today is Monday and Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday we have the update from the Federal Reserve. Uh, it is quite likely that we're, we're going to have a, a interest rate rise of 0.25% from the U.S. Central Bank in the near in the near term. Uh, so, keep, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, obviously, there's, there's an inverse relationship between between the between the two markets. So keep keep an eye out for that. But for the time being, um, we are we are seeing a broad kind of negative move uh, in the price of gold. So if you do get a rally from gold from here. Where could we look to find some potential resistance, possibly from the 50-day moving average at 30.30? Notice how um, this is on a couple of occasions here, the market got us drifted up towards that level, but didn't quite get there. Uh, it acted as resistance on a couple of occasions here, and even when it did manage to kind of firmly break through, it was quickly back below it, and there's a couple of occasions recently where it failed to actually get north of it. Beyond that, we'd be looking towards 13.40. And of course, if you go by north of 1340, we could be looking at testing the recent, uh, the recent, uh, the February high of 1361. So looking here, I'll take a, I'll take a look on the on the daily chart for uh, for Brent crude oil. See what the big picture is. So basically, essentially for the last the last nine months, we have been in a, in a broadly speaking positive trend for the oil market, even though it has given up some ground recently. So since June of, uh, of 2017, a classic example of higher highs and higher lows all the way along. After hitting a multi-year high in, in January, we had a fairly sizable pullback, a fairly sizable uh, correction in, in the oil market. But it has managed to be broadly speaking 
push higher from here. So there were some there were some players wondering is 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 this going to be a case of the market turning over on itself, or is it simply is this a case of we've had a great run for six months, seven months, the market's just t taking a bit of profit and potentially looking to kind of um, fit back in to the wider upward trend. So we've had the correction here, the market's pushed higher. Drifted lower here again, or now appear to be pushing higher here again. So while we remain off the uh, the, the March lows of 63.32, the outlook um, for for um for Brent crude could be positive. Uh, the area to keep an eye out for to the upside will of course be the late February high of 67 uh, 67.93. And if you take off that area, you could be looking heading it back up towards 70. And if we get towards 70 dollars a barrel, we could be looking heading at the uh, the the recent 2018 high. Of um, this recent 28 high of 71.38, but if you do manage to take off this level here, we could be looking at heading back towards the February lows of 62. And if you go south of 62, that would then be uh, a lower low, and that could be looking at heading back down towards $60 a barrel, or perhaps even low as 59.51. This area here, so keep an eye out for that. But while we remain off the the March lows and the February lows. It's likely that the that the uh, that the wider positive trend is going to be still in place. It's a similar looking chart on WTI, but obviously the the levels are different. Uh, BP shares, yes, I will. Um, I will. I'll cover the all after I finish this this piece here on WTI. I'll have a look at the all market. I'll have a look at BP shares. It all kind of ties in nicely together. Similar situation, solid upward trend for seven months. The markets come off, uh, come off in February, but a profit taken. We're pushing higher here. The market has been in a bit of a, a bit of a range bound recently, but the overall the, the positive trend is still intact. So the market has drifted lower here. While we remain north of the uh, say the sixty dollar region, which would be in around the March lows, it's likely that the overall arching positive trend will continue. And if we push on higher from here, we could be the first area to keep an eye out for would be the 200 day moving average at 62.77. And if we go north of that, the area to keep an eye out for then will of course be the late February high of 64.30. And if we go north of that, we could be looking heading it back up towards the 66 dollars uh, per barrel. If you take out 60 dollars a barrel, keep an eye out for the late for the mid February lows of the in 50 58 dollars and 10 cents. But if you, this is going to be a key area to watch out for. If we go south of 58.10, we could be looking at heading back up towards 56, or perhaps even low as down as So the BP shares, I'll just take a look on the uh, on a wider chart just to get a, a better view of what's going on, big picture. So what we've seen out, out of BP, the last couple of years, broadly speaking, a fairly positive trend, a uh, positive upper trend since, uh, the, since February 2016. So for two, for two years, we've, bought, we've broadly seen the market move higher. Granted, we're fully aware we have seen the market uh, come off recently, but the kind of wider trend is still looking fairly positive. What's a, what strikes me very much, uh, is very, what I think is very striking, is the 200 week moving average, which is in around this level, this, this red line here, at um, 44 pounds and 37. Notice how on quite a few occasions it did manage to act as support and acted as kind of both a bit of support and resistance in 2016. So that the 200 week moving average does have a lot of form as acting as support. Uh, throughout 2017 so keep an eye out if you do manage to be drifting lower we could be looking at retesting um, the 200 week moving average but as I said it has acted as support so it may act as support again in the future so what's slightly concerning is the fact that after the market once again all hit hit multi-year a multi-year high in, in January of this year as and we saw a spike in BP shares the market has come off um, Quite, quite substantially since then we're actually now back below the two day moving average which which does give me a bit of um it does, does give me a bit of is a bit of concern 
um, if he managed to kind of remain, probably remain south of, of the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 479, it's likely the market's gone drift lower. And I, as I said, if it does drift lower, it could be drifting heading back down towards the 200 week moving average at 438. So I'll keep an eye on the, on the day. So it could be heading back potentially down towards 438 with, with the 200 week moving average comes into play. If we do manage to retake the 200 day moving average, the first area you should keep ending off what would be the kind of the 490 area here, the two, the 50 day moving average. Because notice how there's a couple of occasions and act, acts as support here and support here. So it does have a better form as acting as both kind of support and resistance um, in the last few months. So it's likely that there could be um, an influential level um, going forward. Of course, if you go beyond 490, the psychological five pounds a share would then be an area to keep an eye out for. And if you go north of five pounds a share, we could be like heading towards the, the late January high of the kind of 420 region. And then if you go beyond that, we'd be looking at heading towards the 2018 high of five pounds 36. I'll take a look now at a few uh, currency pairs. I hope that was okay for you, Thomas. It's been a fairly quiet day in terms of uh, corporate and economic announcements. Uh, we've had some Italian industrial production numbers come out in the morning time. They were okay. They were um, they were it was growing at a decent on a, on a yearly basis of four percent, but that compared with the previous uh, previous year years ago report of four point nine percent. So solid growth, but it's cooling, which is about a decent summation of from what we've what we've seen out of the eurozone recently. You're very welcome, Thomas. No problem. So the big picture is that the euro dollar has been in a fairly de decent upward trend for, for, for some time now. Uh, it, it had a bit of a correction in, in, in September through November, but from November onwards, it's, been, it's, in, it's still in a fairly solid upward trend. To be honest, it's been in, in a fairly quiet, um, it's, in a, it's in a fairly um, uninteresting currency pair recently. While we're kind of south, of, while we're above the kind of the 122 region, or more importantly, uh, the, the 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 March low. Of 121.54. While we're, we're, we're north of that, it's likely the outlook is going to remain positive. And areas to keep an eye out for to the upside will, of course, be the March high of 124.49 because it's sort of, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult, it's struggle to get north of 124. And if you do get north of 124, you got to keep an eye out for 124.49. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at getting it back up towards 125, and then 126 and 127 would be on potential on the cards. A break south of, of the uh, of the of the March low could send us back down towards 121.92, and then below that again down towards the the 120 area. But you know, by and large, it's in a fairly it's in a fairly um, positive upward trend still. Coming out of the pound versus the US dollar, as I said at the, at the top of the webinar, it's had a decent move today given the, uh, the the news that the UK and the European Union have, have agreed on the transition period. So the wider view for the last year has, has been very positive for the pound versus the US dollar. If you draw a low between the lows of last March with the lows of August, granted, I know I traded through it a few occasions in November, but it still managed to hold above it. While pound sterling remains north of this trend line, it's likely the outlook is going to remain positive. And lo and behold, we've been edging, creeping, creeping higher here uh, throughout, throughout the month of March. The news has, 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 has been broken at the... The UK and the EU have come to an agreement on the transition period. What do you know? It's jolted higher. So we're comfortably off the, tra off the trend line support. And now we're, we're pushing higher. We're at, we're at 11 now. Not seen for nearly a month. So to keep an eye out for the um, the, the, the mid-February high of 141.50. If you take out 141.50, we could, could be looking heading it back up towards the 143 area. And then once you go beyond that, be kind of 144, 145 are the areas to keep an eye out for. If the market does manage to drift lower, uh, you know we could find some support from the 140 area. The one, sorry, just south, of, just not too far away from when we are here in the 140 area, or perhaps even down in the kind of 130, uh, you know, the 138, 80, or 138, 90 region. But even if you do manage to drift lower, as long as it's well above this, this trend line support, it's likely that the outlook is is going to remain positive for the pound versus the U.S. dollar. Take a look now what's going on at Euro Sterling. Like I said at the top of the hour, uh, top of the webinar, it is it was under pressure today given what's been going on uh, in relation to the 
in relation to the uh, the British pound. So it's been it's been an on, on interesting ish currency pair recently. It's been sort of range bound for quite some time, but even though at the beginning of the month the, the euro did manage to kind of snap out and take out the, uh, the February and January highs, which was looking quite bullish for the euro sterling. What did we have? As, you know, we've had a quick, large succession of downward moves. The market's coming off here heavily. We're back below the two-day moving average. Uh, we've taken out the late February low, so we could be looking heading back out that down towards the January. We could be looking heading back out towards zero spot 8800, or, or perhaps even as low as the kind of December and January low of zero spot 8689. And if we go south of there, we could be looking heading back down, back down towards zero spot 88 itself. Uh, moves to the upside are likely to, to run into resistance from the 200 day moving average which comes into play at 0 spot 88.93 and if we go north of that we'll be looking towards the March high of 0 spot 89.67. But also as the market's driving lower here we're seeing a solid increase in the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator. So the market's driving lower and the momentum is clearly rising as well so negative momentum is clearly rising as well. So it's, it's like in the near term, we could, we could continue to see further losses for the euro versus the British pound. In a second now, I'm going to come on to the US dollar versus Japanese yen, uh, which will be my last uh, market I look at for the session, unless, of course, you, there's, what, there's anything else you want me to have a look at. So, dollar yen has been in a solid downward trend since November. As you can see here, lower low, lower high, a bit of consolidation um, through December and uh, January, but then of course the lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, so on and so forth. While we remain south of um, this this price area here, 107.32, which also coincides with September low, um, the outlook is likely to remain negative for the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. And keep an eye, keep an eye on the the March low of 105.25. That would be now to keep an eye out for in terms of potential areas of support. And if we go south of there, we could be looking heading back down towards 125 and then the 104 area. If you do manage to break north of 107 spot 32, keep an eye out for the, the 108 area. And then if you go north of, of, of 108, uh, we, we really would need to be kind of taken out to say the either 109.78 area or perhaps, or, or perhaps even the um, this high here. Of 110.48 before we before we could become more confident that this wider negative trend has been negated. Is there anything else, any other markets you would like me to have a look at? Feel free to shout out. Uh, what I would like to show you on our trading platform. Um, this is here, here is the insights. Insights can be found under market pulse. Uh, second option down. Insights here. Some of the updates that we do throughout the day get posted to insights. Some of the data alerts in terms of, say, corp uh, corporate announcements or sorry, sorry, economic announcements or breaking news stories get updated there. There'll be a video of this webinar will be posted on insights uh, within the next hour or so. I also want to talk to you about Chart Forum. Um, chart Forum can be found also under the Market Pulse. Third option down, uh, Chart Forum. Essentially, on Chart Forum, what we do is we take a quick snapshot of a particular market and write a few hundred words about it and talk about what's going on in the price action and talk about the, the potential areas to keep an eye out for. As I mentioned, I, I showed to you um, on our trading website where you can find our week ahead, we also have an economic calendar, which once again is found under Market Pulse, uh, is the fourth option down, Market Pulse, it'll show you um, the economic calendars that are that are penciled in and then once as soon as the numbers are out they will, they will be populated in the actual column and you can see here we have the forecast and the previous numbers so you can get a gauge of what the market's expecting and what the market was doing the last time the report came out and lastly but not least what i want to show you is future and other webinars uh, so obviously um today is, is the monday the 19th of march tonight at 7 p.m gmt 7, 7, 1900 gmt 7 p.m. UK time, we have the Trader Development Program Part 3, the Trader's Mindset. You don't have to have been uh, uh, logged in to the previous two ones to, to, uh, to, to tune in for this one. Um, so, so feel free to sign up for that on Wednesday, the 21st of March at, at 19.30 GMT, 7.30 p.m. UK time. We have the Trading Strategy at Defined uh, webinar. And of course, next Monday... At 12.15 will, of course, be the, be the Monday market webinar. 
Um, if, you've seen a, if you don't have any further questions or comments, I will look to wrap up the webinar there. You're very kind, Thomas, and uh, you're very much appreciated. Um, same to yourself, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so from all of us here at CFC Markets this week, have a good trading week and good luck.